Hey everybody, how we doing? I realized that I um, forgot to schedule a celebratory live for today, launch day. So I did it super last minute. So, hey, I'm glad you're here. Um, how's the sound? I'm not sure that the earbud connected. Hello, hello, just testing the sound right now. Let me know. Hello, Reflections, good morning. Hey, Nessa. Hello, thank you. Hey, Donna, yay. Thank you, Jennifer. Sounds good. Okay, good. Um, Mary, so good to see you here. I'm glad it sounds good. Um, I am back in the real world. It is very real. <laughs> no complaints, though. No complaints. It was nice. It was, it was nice to come home. That's for sure. Hello, Kelly. Any first timers today? Uh, Virginia says, morning, y'all. Um, good you're home. Love your hair this morning. Thanks. I washed it. That was much needed. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I uh, really stretched the, uh, the social norms of hair washing on this trip. Yeah. The trip was awesome. It was wonderful. Um, you know, all the things you would expect being with two young children and um, my mom and my aunt who are, uh, you know, uh, not of the generation. They haven't traveled a lot. Let, let, let's, just, let's just say that. They haven't tra traveled a lot internationally. So uh, lots of, lots of stuff every day. Yes. <laughs> hey, Kelly, first time catching me live. That's awesome. Um, Hilltop Bear ordered the stamp set this morning. I'm super excited to use swatching moving forward. Yes, use for swatching. Um, so uh, as long as the sound is good, we're going to start, start up here. I'm going to do the official intro soon. If you're new here, <clears throat> hello, first of all, and hooray that you're here. Here's how things work with these lives. Um, I come on, I do sound checks, I'm silly. Um, and if you're here live, you get to see all that. But then after the live, my editor comes through and makes things a little more digestible for folks who are watching on replay. Because if you've ever felt like you've, you've caught something on a replay and you think it's live maybe, and then you realize it's not live, it's kind of a letdown. So um, after the live is over, I like to edit everything so that you know from the get-go that you're not watching live and then it's a little more digestible and it's a little more like get to the point. Yeah. <clears throat> so just take a look at comments here. Uh, oh, wow. So many comments. Um, sounds good. Sounds good. My secret is dry shampoo. I, I'm just going to say, I, you know, I'm a long hair girly, so, and I don't, my hair doesn't get oily, so um, I'm just going to share this. You might unsubscribe, but I did not wash my hair on the trip. Uh, I use dry shampoo twice, and I use a boar bristle hairbrush, um, and it keeps my hair super clean and it distributes what oils do happen. It is really keeps my hair healthy. But let me tell you, by day 22, I was like, the hair needs to be washed. Normally I go two weeks, two and a half. So almost three weeks is a bit much. Or just over three weeks. Anywho, <clears throat> don't don't unfollow me. Don't unsubscribe. I'm not, I'm not dirty. Just use a good hairbrush. <laughs> See, this is the kind of stuff that gets edited out because it's nonsense. Sound is great over here. Awesome, awesome. <coughs> you always look great. No worries. Thanks. 
if you noticed on the trip, if you followed along in my stories and friends, just so you're aware, I did post about it here, but in case you didn't see it, um, I documented my whole trip on stories. I vlogged the entire time. Um, there are four archives on Instagram. So, um, could be, could be a fun, fun thing. Could be the, the final reason that you just finally decide to get on Instagram. Who knows? Could be annoying. Who knows? But I was vlogging every day and uh, everyone was so appreciative. They're like, oh, we feel bad. You're taking time out of your trip. But honestly, it was with the, the group of folks that I was on the trip with, it was a much needed and look forward to anticipated time in throughout my day where I got to just chat with you guys. Um, because, you know, it's just chaos of travel with kids and, and moms and aunts and stuff. Um, so I really enjoyed the vlogging. Yeah. So it's fun to watch. I think it was fun to create. So you might want to check it out. You are welcome, Elle. Uh, I, you know, you ever have an issue with your brushes, things happen. Mass, pro you know, my brushes are mass produced. Um, things do happen. I am very, um, I am very, very particular with my manufacturer, but we'll have like little parts of batches, you know, maybe 20 brushes out of 2000 will, you know, have got some like bristles popping out. Um, and you happen to get one of those. Well, just get in touch with me. You'll get a new brush. Easy peasy. Ralph, keep this in. No, I'm kidding. You're not gonna be able to keep it in because it doesn't make sense. Anywho, um, Ralph's my editor if you're new here. But yeah, if you ever have a concern with any of your your products, um, honestly, like I've, I've had people message me and say like, I lost my liner brush. What do I do? And I just sent him a new liner brush. Like, I can't have you without your liner brush, please. Um, Jennifer, I'm glad you followed along. Oh, good. I'm so glad you were doing some screenshots. That's what I was hoping. Um, we as Americans, yes, we do wash our hair entirely too much. Um, I agree. My hair is, I mean, I used to wash and blow dry and curl my hair every day in college. My hair was so fried. Um, my hair is the healthiest it's ever been. And I'm 46. Just saying. <clears throat> um, Good as the day they arrived. Virginia, awesome. And that's how the vast majority of them are. Things happen, but, you know, yeah, I love that. Um, Rose says, my art for joy's sake point set was strange, and Kristen helped me get a replacement very fast. Yeah, we had one of our batches. I mean, friends, we've sold out. The art for joy's sake, the original set, we've sold out, I don't know, over 10 times. But one of the batches... Um, <clears throat> And we usually order 1,000 or 2,000 sets at a time. I know that's insane. That's mind boggling. But one of the batches, the shape of the quarter inch dagger um, was not as consistent as we would have liked. And some of them, even through our, our quality checks, some of them got out accidentally. And uh, yeah, so we replaced those. Absolutely. <clears throat> Wonderful. Glad to hear it, Jennifer. You look 10 years younger, Koyu. Thanks. Um, I started taking care of my skin too. 45, I decided, huh. Yeah, might wanna might wanna take care of this because it's not getting any younger. I have the very pretty flower ceramic palette and maybe 12 little circles. And yeah, love it. Great. So glad you love it. So glad we're working on some fun stuff coming up. I met with a, and I promise we're going to get to the stamps <clears throat> and I'll talk about this more on Thursday. Yes, I'm going live on Thursday as well. And, um, I'm going to be doing my European art supply haul. I've got a pile bags and things over here, but I did meet with Izzy watercolors. Um, and she let me know, she was like, I can't believe you no one ever pronounces my name correctly. Her name is actually pronounced EC, EC, uh, EC watercolors, but so many people pronounce it Izzy that she's kind of sticking with that. So I have to like readjust my brain, but it's like, it's my son's nickname. So Izzy watercolors, uh, met with Izzy and, oh my gosh, friends, this is super unofficial because we just started talking about it, but, um, 
we've got some fun things planned for our respective shops. And uh, that way, you know, friends in the U.S. can get her paints um, and some ceramics from a friend of hers. And then vice versa, her fans in the Netherlands can get some of my products. So coming up, super excited. Um, <clears throat> yeah. All right. Ray says, I adore your personality and content. Thanks for sharing your joy with art. You're welcome. What happened to the mouse? Didn't it used to be colorful? Oh, I got a new mouse. The one that was covered in paint and who knows what else? It was paint. <laughs> um, it died. So there is a little bit of blue, something or other. That, um, yeah, it came off. But it'll get dirty. It'll get painted up soon enough. Don't worry. Uh, Kimberly says, I have your first brush set for over a year and they are still doing great. Also have two of your metal palettes, the 12 and the 24. I love how cute they are. Friends, I have a question and then I promise I'll do the official um, intro and get into it. But we've seen a weird phenomenon happening with the empty palettes ever since launching them that didn't and still has never happened with the other products. Uh, we, we're getting a lot of returns, you know, just relative to our other products. Still not a lot of returns in, in terms of like Amazon's percentage at large, but for us, it's a lot. So I'm just curious, like if you've returned one, um, is it that maybe, here's what I thought maybe it was. People buy the whole set or they buy multiples thinking, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use these decorative Paint, uh, sets for all of my paints. And then they maybe are like, you know what, I need to be more, you know, frugal and they send a couple back or they send one back. Has anybody done that? Is that like maybe what's happening? We're trying to figure out because they're not coming back damaged. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, let me know. Mary Tessa, I mostly use the daggers. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine why. I bought the Hellebores and love it. I have not purchased any of your empty palettes, but from my own experience, sometimes empty palettes have a problem closing. Yeah, we've tested all that um, in, during our quality control. Um, so <clears throat> I never returned a product. <laughs> Thanks, Virginia. Anyway, if uh, and if you don't want to say it publicly, feel free to message me. You can email Christy at ChristyRice.com or DM me on Insta. Um, I'm just curious um, because we're trying to figure it out. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and switch. And uh, we're just going to get right into it. I'm going to take a drawing. Uh, little secret. This also streams to my Facebook page, the Art for Joy's Sake with Christy Rice. That version does not get edited. So if you ever want to rewatch or I said something during this like ad-libbing time that you want to go back to, you can um, go to that Facebook page. The link is in description there. Um, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm reading, I'm reading. I'm reading. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> One more question. I got to ask it. Does my dirty watercolor paper background like bother you guys? Is it gross? Is it gross? I feel like it's kind of gross today. I'm going to switch it out. I'm going to switch it out. I've gotten comments on it. Like people are like, you're so sloppy. You're gross. They're probably just trolls. But then sometimes I think, well, maybe like like a sensory it might be a sensory thing anywho let me know does it bother you i won't be offended i like to be su super sensitive you know we all process information really differently um we all see things differently so it's important it's important to be sensitive in our world all right and do better when we can do better okay that's better <laughs> Whew. It is getting warm out in NEPA. Friends, if you're having fun so far, go ahead and give this video a boop. That's a like. It's a little thumbs up. Um, if you're watching on TV, I'm not really sure how you do it. Maybe somebody in comments can tell you. <coughs> I'm 
we are going to go, we're going to get it. Oh, that's not, that's not attractive. Nobody wants to see that. Sorry, I didn't realize the camera was like right in the way. Good enough. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Official intro. Whew. Friends, my name is Christy Rice, and today we are celebrating the launch of a product that has been long coming, the swatching stamp set. Here she is. Yes. So today we're really just going to play around. I'm going to show you what's included, how it all works. Uh, if you've never swatched with stamps before, well, you're going to figure out how and why. And then here's the thing. My stamping, um, my swatches and the way that I use the stamps and the way that I've been stamping um, is different. Uh, my swatching is not something that I've always done. I've not always swatched my watercolors. I've not always swatched my watercolor pencils. I've just been a kind of dive into it type of gal. But I realized that not everybody's like that. And then I committed myself this year, 2024, who knows when you're watching this, but in 2024, I committed to trying to get through all of my watercolors that I've collected. And if you've been on this channel for a while, you know that's a lot. I will put some links down below if you want to see some of my collections. I've committed to swatching them all. And uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And the, the stamps are helping. Here's why. I wanted to strike a balance between documenting new collections of paint, right? Uh, some of us, honestly, I would I would venture to say the vast majority of the watercolor community. I'm gonna pause here. Sorry, friends. I'm just thinking ahead to editing. <coughs> I would say that the vast majority of the watercolor community is swatching in some shape or form, right? And the reason why is that it's a beautifully, perfectly, you know, wonderful way to document and to get acquainted with your new supplies, right? But what I have seen happen over time, <clears throat> what I've seen happen over time in my, my time in the YouTube watercolor world, which believe it or not is since like 2011, I think is when I posted my first video. I've seen the, the practice of swatching almost become an end for many people. They get stuck there. And so that's why in my teaching, when I started really uploading in 2016, and then when I really got serious about YouTube and watercolor and where I stood within the community in uh, 2021, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to talk about swatching in a traditional way. <clears throat> And that's because it should be about documenting, but it should also play a large role in experimentation when you're first starting out in watercolor. So my stamp set was designed with that in mind. This particular stamp right here is a great example of one of the stamps I designed for experimentation. Uh, this one is designed to encourage you to mix and to see how two new colors work together beautifully on the page. So what I want to show you first things first is a couple examples of combinations that I have done between the 16 stamps that come in this set. That's right, 16 stamps, all right? 16 and how I have combined some of those for the purpose of documentation alone, because sometimes you just got to document. You just got to know what the paint name is, the brand name, what the pigment numbers are. Is it how, you know, where does it stand on the light fast kind of gradient um, and all that stuff, right? So then the other end of the spectrum of swatching, in my opinion, is a more experimental kind of approach, right? So let me show you a couple of these. Really fun, really, um, I, for me, it was quite eye-opening when I started thinking about how to teach my way of swatching 
and how to make it make sense for someone, especially who's been swatching the traditional way for a very long time. So here's a great example. Um, this swatch collection, now imagine this repeated probably eight times on a nine by 12 sheet, all right? You, you recreate, you kind of, you set out your stamps. So we started with this, use your guidelines. And friends, there is a video, it's a little bit over an hour long, if I'm remembering correctly, that comes free with this set, all right? Comes free and it goes into major depth about how to do all of this, all right? So you're gonna go ahead, use the grids on your acrylic block and you are gonna set up your, your little collection. And then we would go ahead to add the light fast reading. Where is my light fast stamp? It's missing off of this little, <clears throat> it's over here. Here we go. Um, let's just go for it. Let's just do the whole thing. Let's, let's really show you how this bad boy works. All right. Light fastness, again, use your grid for those out there that are gonna be like, uh, things aren't lined up, it's gonna freak you out. I get it, I get it, I get it. So that's why I remember my manufacturer asked me, he's like, do you want the grid on the acrylic block? And I'm like, uh, why wouldn't I? Yes, please, we need the grid, all right? So you're gonna stick those on there and you're gonna get them all lined up perfectly and then you are ready to stamp. All right, so this is a great example of an experimentational swatch. Let me show you why. <laughs> well, this is a little bit more in the middle. And this stamp, the swatching set is going to allow you to develop a system that works for you and but hopefully encourages you to take your swatching to the next level. And yeah, it creates a little more swatching work, honestly. But I would love for you to do if you are really committed to your traditional approach to swatching, do that first and then do some of this more experimental stuff next and then file it all together. So you have that much more information and that experimental swatching experience that you gave yourself will then have you more primed and ready to go with an actual painting than you could imagine. Okay. So this would be used for your traditional swatch, maybe. I would actually, here's what I would do here. Fill in all of your traditional information. I would use this for that ombre from mass tone to sheerest of sheer. I would use this as the traditional swatch. Fill out the light fast information, the granulating information, and does it stain, right? And then I would use this one for some other type of experimentation, all right? So for example, maybe you're swatching Sennelier and Sennelier is phenomenal for glazing. So maybe up here, you swatch one color, right? And kind of make it even, even, um, no, no ombre, no gradient, let it dry and then glaze over half of it with a color you're curious about how it glazes with and document which one was the glaze. Right, am I right? Now let me take a look at comments because I'm I'm curious like what y'all are thinking of, of my approach to all this. You're probably like, Chrissy, you crazy. All right, let's see. Uh, the painted, we have a question about my painted Stanley. Friends, I'll link the video below. I hand painted a Stanley. It did not go how I planned. However, it's just been sitting back here. I have not used it. I did not take it to Europe. So I'm gonna have to give you an update on that a little bit later. But I'd watch the video because it's it's fun. I think it's interesting. And it's not the end of the journey for me on that one. Um, let's see here. I love your palettes. They're just as good as the ones by Da Vinci and Daniel Smith. Wow, thank you. Okay, I just, for whatever, that, um, did I get some new rings? I did, I did. This is not new, but this one is new. Um, I found this one in Germany. I think it was in Germany. Um, Stein on Rhein. Rhein? Stein on Rhein. I don't know. I can't pronounce this stuff. It took me forever to realize that ST was sh not st. 
I'm going to be sharing on Instagram. This artist needs to blow up because do you, do you want to see something? You know what? I This wasn't planned, but you know what? When something is good and when a small business is doing something so freaking innovative, we're going to talk about it. You ready for this? And I will link her information below. There's a little screw, like the uh, female part, male part attaches to the ring. You screw on the medallion. It's glass and about like four different ones. And it, it screws on a lot easier than I seem to be making it appear. I don't know what my problem is. There it goes. And you screw it on and it stays screwed. And I am obsessed. I'm going to message this girl and I'm going to be like, I want to sell your stuff in my shop. I am obsessed. She's brilliant. Maybe he, I don't know. I think it's a she. Yeah. Stein on rhyme. Rhyme. And I will share the info. <clears throat> what is the smaller strip under the marker? This is your, this is kind of your classic swatching bit where you create, this is how I use it. I create a, well, let's just get some paint out. I'm like, wait a minute, where's all my stuff? I haven't unpacked my art supplies yet. And there's a reason I've actually unpacked everything else in my existence from coming home, but not my art supplies. And there's good reason for that because <laughs> Thursday's live. And if you're watching this on replay, hey, <laughs> say, hey, replay. So we know you're here. Um, there is going to be a European art supply, uh, reveal hall, whatever you want to call it. All right. So on Thursday, um, so just look for that in my live archive. If this is like a year later and you're like, what Thursday? Um, uh, so mass tone, rinse the brush, go over that black part because that is an indicator of opacity. All right. That is an indicator of opacity. So nice mass tone. Get that going strong. Really, I like to really exaggerate. I really want to see what my colors can do. Sorry, friends. I'm hitting that. I went outside the lines, got so excited, of course, with my most staining color from my palette. But anyway, that's what that bit is for so that you can see how much of that for the love, you see what the mess I'm making here? So you can see how much of that black um, uh, bit underneath is gonna show, right? I made a holy hot mess out of this swatch. Um, that's gonna give you an indication of how opaque that particular color that you swatched is. Pam, it's okay to be late. I'm perpetually late, all is well. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Here's another example of using that piece. So you can see, comparatively speaking, the red is probably going to be slightly more opaque when it dries. Um, here's a good example. My blue in my palette is quite opaque, and you can see that, comparatively speaking, to the pink. Yeah. So great question, though. I'm seeing the real you. Oh, the background. Oh, yeah. My space is well used. Um, it sounds like someone is clearing their throat. Hello. It's weird because it's not you. I mean, I clear my throat a lot. It very well could be me. Like, does it sound like <clears throat> that? I, I don't. I, I think it's a nervous tick. I'm not sure, though. I clear my throat a lot. Um, so maybe it is me. Or is it like a clicking, maybe? Anywho, um, could that be any cuter? Um, I want to officially swatch all my handmade paints, says Nessa. It's going to be so fun using your stamps. Woot! I would, I mean, I would have to agree, but I'm biased. Um, is that watercolor paper on your desktop? It is. I use um, Strathmore 300. It's the yellow cover. Um, it's just cheap, but it's thick enough. It holds up as a background. Uh, as someone with sensory processing and vision issues, it can sometimes make things a bit difficult to discern, but I don't think it's gross. Okay, good. See, that's what I wanted to hear. I needed to hear that. 
Kaylee, swatching is one of your favorite things to do. Yay, keep doing it. I started swatching on the page and next to my painting in the sketchbook. I think this will be great fun. Now uh, I use a template and make squares. Yeah, that's great too. Absolutely. Your OCD, you have to swatch. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, nice, nice, nice. 16, yes, 16. I'll be wanting these stamps forever. Uh, hopefully they don't sell out before you can grab them. All right. All right. Whew. Y'all, I got to turn the fan on. I'm hot. I don't know what's happening. <coughs> it's a getting warm. Springtime here in the Pennsylvania. Or whew, who knows? Hot flashes. I don't know. Could be. Mm. Jennifer, I am so behind on Thrifty Apprentices um, reviews. I need to watch them. Um, I hope they were, I hope they were well received. Uh, <laughs> Laminate the finished stamping swatch and add it to your palette. Love that, Virginia. Love it. Love it. The ink is completely waterproof. Um, so listen, I did. I called it water resistant because I just wanted to be safe. But I'll tell you what, I have not been able, uh, no matter how little I've let the ink dry, I have not been able to make it smudge or like bleed when when the moisture of the swatching hits it. So unofficially, yes, it is waterproof. Um, they were fabulous and ultra positive. Oh, good. The sticky part of the stamp, it lasts a long time. Sorry. Yeah. So it does last a long time. There are some videos, um, of ways that you can re-stickify them. And I'm going to be sharing more of that once I, I test out the different ways. Um, if they do start, because I eventually they will start to lose their their grip. That's just a normal part of the kind of the use process of these types of stamps. So I'm going to be um, kind of figuring out what I personally would recommend and what I think works best. And then, of course, I'll be sharing them with you. All right. Ouch. Just hit that ring, but it didn't break. <laughs> Here's another example of uh, this is one of my favorite swatches. Imagine this bad boy repeated. You know, this would probably be 10 times on a 9 by 12. Imagine uh, that. Let me see here if I have the swatch page that I did from the free, um, the free video. <clears throat> This is a good time to cough because we're going to edit this all out. I don't know where to go. Well, I can't find it. Anyway, um, this one I love. The verticalness of it. Super fun. Um, so I did the paint. Um, and here is what I did with this one. Uh, I used this part to play around with Punchy from my art for joy's sake. Um, and look at some of the separating that happened with Punchy there. So fun. Then I used the band to experiment with lifting. Hello. To see how the color lifts. And then, of course, I have Punchy and Paint Crush. And then I made my own. I just took a Sharpie, put down a little bit of a black bar, and then I made my own um, opacity swatch. Right? How cute is that? Lots going on here. <clears throat> this was, um, let's see, this was a Distress watercolor pencil. And the main color was Pickled Raspberry, which was this up here. And then just Pickled Raspberry on its own so you could see what it really looked like. And then um, I took pickled raspberry and kind of did an ombre with mustard seed. And I wrote mustard seed there. 
um, no light fast information is available on those that I could find. Um, and pigment numbers none given, you can decide how to indicate that. But look at all the information, including traditional info, is on this one little piece. All right. Here's a fun one. Oh, come on. They're all fun. Um, I have the brush. This is the uh, half-inch dagger. And I am messing around. This is a mixing swatch. So this is an experimental mixing swatch. Roman Schmal. And I am playing around with pigment number 224 and 346. Royal Blue and Aquarius Green. And I am just messing around. And I didn't, it wasn't high staining, so I left that blank. So lots of information still here. Lots, lots, lots. Even a little bit of opacity information because of how little of the outline you can see here where that leaf was, was painted with a lot of coverage. Just so much information beyond traditional swatching. Here's another one. Too simple, right? So Fig is the main swatch from A Gallo, and I wanted to pick, kind of see how Fig, which is here, and Azo, the yellow, would blend together. That's what I did there. Another experimental swatch, but bolstered with traditional swatching at the bottom. We have a, this is my mixing swatch. This is a swatch that really encourages you to mix. Oh, thank you. Thanks, my nails. My nails, oh, they were my, they were my Europe nails. They need to get redone. But anyway, we have Flow, we have Delve, and we see how they mix. And then we have the traditional bit down here so we can look at opacity, and, and how they kind of lift at the end here. All right. Here's a fun little one. Punchy and flow. Light fast. I get you're guessing a light fast if you've got two colors going on here, obviously. Um, moderately staining. I would have filled in both if it was high staining. And I would have filled in none if they, it was not highly staining color. No granulation. So I left that like that. Empty. My trip was awesome. Thank you so much for asking. Um, the live on Thursday uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern, Ralph, you can cut out this part, uh, is going to be going through the art supplies that I picked up over there. Um, and some stories, because I met some artists, um, some expected, some unexpected. It was really cool. Um, mm. Let's see, I could play with these all day. I know they they have that. Um, the Ranger Archival Ink is yes. Oh, Light Fast. And then the Distressed Ink is water-based. Oh, there's another conversation going on here. <laughs> Mary says, I might stamp and leave overnight for sure. I would smear it. I'll be honest, when I first uh, got the prototype, I stamped, I left it overnight and I was like, great, it didn't smear. And then I stamped and left it for like an hour. I was like, oh, wow, great. It didn't smear. And then when I was making this video, the free video, which, by the way, um, is, is accessed by the QR code on the back of your stamp box, um, I stamped and let it go like for two minutes and it didn't smear. So, but I understand. I understand the concern. I do. I do. <clears throat> okay. So let's talk about the nuts and bolts if you're interested in grabbing your set. Um, so if you want to help a girl out, uh, this is what you can do. The, how do I explain this? If you want to help a girl, and even if you're watching on replay, anytime, um, this is going to be the most helpful to a small business, helpful to a small business way that you can make a purchase of their products on Amazon. So there are a couple of keywords. Number one today right now that I am focusing on is watercolor paint set. So it's actually a key phrase. So it's watercolor, one word, paint, two words, set, third word. The best thing that you can do for me as a small business, if you have a few extra minutes, is go to Amazon, open up the page, and you're going to search for that three-word key phrase. When you get the full search results up, 
you're going to go in the upper right hand corner on your mobile and then I think on a desktop it's on the left hand side column and you're going to look for a price filter and you're going to filter 25 to 50 dollars and you're going to hit done or show results and uh, then you're going to be able to find this the photo of this fairly quickly. On mobile, it's going to be like on page six. On desktop, probably be about page three or four. As of today, this is called Search Find Buy, and it's a great way to show, uh, it's a great way to help out a business, a small business like mine, who's trying to keep up with the big guys to show up in search results. So it shows that there's relevance between the search phrase and the product being searched if that makes sense. So if you would like to purchase and help me out, you can use that process. If you're like, Christy, I just want to buy it, okay? I'll help you out another day, and that's fine. Um, the link is below. It's uh, early in the description box. You can find it there. It's going to take you to a landing page, and you'll just click through to that, and you'll be able to purchase directly on Amazon. So, um, but again, thank you in advance for anyone who is... Uh, willing to do that. Yeah, you can type Christy Rice. Um, if you want it to come up quicker, it comes up first page. Um, uh, on desktop, it's on page three. Awesome. That makes sense. Yeah. So uh, if you could do that watercolor paint set, and that's a tricky thing about these. I couldn't really, I'm not focusing my attention on, on phrases like stamp set because folks that are looking for stamps for crafting, aren't really gonna be wanting this. Folks that are buying new watercolor paint sets maybe are. So anyway, search watercolor paint set, turn on the price filter, 25 to $50. Find the product, you'll see it's a cute picture. It has the box in it with a little pink carnation and then make your purchase if that's what you're hoping to do today. I would so appreciate it. It really just really helps out. Really, really helps. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here, Nessa. Um, yes, would love to see you on replay. Would love to see you. <clears throat> oh, cool. Your Gina is painting coasters that she made from the backboard of her watercolor paper pad. That's amazing. Wow. I love that. Um, thank you, Wendy. I so appreciate you. Um, can we refill, rewet the pad? Um, I'm going to have to get you more information on that. Um, I'm probably just going to order refills. Um, any of my, uh, super experienced stamping friends, um, I don't know if, uh, like re-wetting it is something that people do, but maybe, um, but honestly, I'm not the only one that makes a waterproof ink. Um, I did choose the color specifically, but like if you end up needing a new one, you're not going to have a hard time finding one that works really well. Um, but I probably will order some uh, replacements that folks can get as needed. <clears throat> hello, Carol. Hello, hello. Um, it is available in some markets in Europe, Canada, um, even Australia. We know that for right now. You just need to search your best bet. If you're international, make life easy. Just search Christy Rice. If it doesn't come up with that keyword, it's probably not in your market. Um, ooh, on page two, Lee, I'm on page two for watercolor paint set. I don't care what I'm on page two for actually, but I'm just curious. That's awesome, yay. Oh, that's how you got to talking about ink, gotcha. All right, cool, cool. All right, let me show you a few more things. Um, and then, yeah. Keep the questions coming, friends. I'm here for it, here for it. Here's another little example. I just love all the combos. I love all the combos. Now, let me show you. I'll make some room here of kind of where my head's at with, um, where's my other block? There it is. All right. Let's do a stamp. Let's, let's just get, you know, talking about this stamp set. So the cows come home, but I actually haven't done a stamp. All right. So do a mix. This is our mixing stamp. So a two color exploration. 
then you might want to choose a one color to a step. Actually, let's do this. No, we're going backwards. Getting that up. We'll do this. Let's see if these all fit. I have I have an idea. I don't think I've done this combo before. I hope it fits. I think it might. Oh yeah. We're gonna just flip flop these though. We're actually going to do this one on top. All right, so this is your another great example of an exploratory swatch. All right. So you've got, oh, we got to make sure we leave enough room to write. All right. All right. Get that going right underneath. So this is all your basic info right here. Brand name, pigment number, et cetera. This is going to be your swatch from, um, you know, mass tone to fully washed. And then this is going to be your mixing experiment. And you're probably wondering, well, Christy, gosh, if I have a new palette, I've got 24 colors. There's so many possibilities of mixing. So how do I choose? Like, how am I, am I going to make like 30 pages of swatches? You can if you want. But no, the idea is that with this main color, Pick one color in your in your palette otherwise that you find intriguing that you think will play beautifully with um with that main color. And I'll show you what I mean more specifically. All right, so you don't need to like press too hard. Now here's the thing when you are making your stamp, you just want to lay it down. You don't want to zhuzh it in any way. You just want to press evenly, straight up and down and lift it off, all right? And I put that one on backwards, but that's okay. And I'm gonna go right to it and kind of show you, uh, you know, that this thing is 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 not gonna, it's not gonna blend or bleed on ya. All right, so I'm gonna go here and get my mass tone going. And when I do a swatch, I really don't mess around. Like I am gonna load up the color at the beginning of that swatch area. I am really gonna load it up. I see a lot of swatching where you're not, folks are not really showing off the full potential of the wash. I want you to really show off the full potential of the wash. The reason that I think that's not happening is because you're not rinsing your brush. I am rinsing and blotting my brush in between each stroke. All right, rinsing and blotting between each stroke to create that beautiful ombre. Now at the end there, I didn't need to because I didn't have a lot of color on my brush, but I don't want to carry all that color down. I really want to see how this, this color shears out with a lot of water, right? So important. All right, now the red in my palette, I want to see what it does with the Fierce, which is my fluorescent. So I'm gonna just blob the two colors into those sections, rinse thoroughly, and then push them together. Push them down, push them together. Might even wanna get a little more yellow going. And in that middle area is where you want the true full mix. Then I'm gonna rinse and go to each side and blend it out. And then I'm not going to zhuzh much here. I'm not going to try to force anything else much to happen because, again, this is an experiment. I want to see the full mix, but then I want to see all the crazy, unexpected weirdness that happens along the way to either watercolor pole, if you will. You know, the yellow pole and the, the red pole. <laughs> I might add a little bit more of the pure color at each pole. You know, I'm, I'm making a South Pole, North Pole reference if you didn't get it yet. Sorry. Okay. And then you would just fill in your info. This is such a fabulous way to be technical, but then to be playful at the same time in the same session. And notice I did not let that ink dry. And there it is. It's not smearing. It's not bleeding. Uh, let me take a look at comments. Thank you, Tamara. I'm so glad you love the set. What did I do with my mouse? It's disappeared. Oh, hi. There it is. 
<laughs> yes. Stamps have come a long way. Yes. No. All right. Let's see here. When I ordered the set, I put in watercolor stamp set and you were on the first page. Well, that's awesome. That is awesome too. I will take that. Um, Elizabeth says you could always buy normal ink when the ink from this uh, set runs out. You'd have to make sure that it is waterproof. There you go. Just purchase. Thank you, Bella. Bell A. Sorry. Um, Donna says I typed in the search for Amazon and it popped right up in the second item. Thank you, Christy. Awesome. Thank you, friends. I'm so appreciative. Ooh, Ray says if ink pads are stored upside down, it helps keep the ink towards the top of the pad. Thank you for that tip. I have not been doing that. Um, I don't mean to be a pill, but when do you anticipate the ceramic um, flower brush dress to come back into stock? Uh, it's so hard. We are actually, we're having such a hard time. You know, our one ceramicist, she can only do so much. So I think the next launch, um, if I'm not mistaken, I could be so wrong. You know what? I'm not going to say it because I'll be wrong because I know we've been talking about some options, but you may want to um, email Kristen, hello at christyrice.com and ask her and she will give you more current information. Um, Wendy says, FYI, I watched Emma LaFave showcase your stamp set weeks ago. Um, and I've been waiting for them. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Yay, Wendy. I'm so glad you saw Emma's video. That was so, so kind of her and so generous for her to share in a whole video. It was so cool. All right, friends. Awesome. Awesome sauce. All right. So just showing you a few of the combos that I adore. Um, and yeah, so fun. So fun, right? Um, in the video that comes free with your set, um, I go through, there's a whole section on cleaning. So if you're like, oh gosh, how do we clean these? Cause traditionally, um, water resistant, waterproof ink is much harder to clean off of the stamps, but I've given you a ton of options that make light work of that process. So don't worry about that. I go through all of that and, uh, yeah. All right, let me see. I want to show you another combo, maybe one that I haven't done before. Let's see. I'm going to do, I'm putting these all back. And yes, store these back on the plastic sheets because, I mean, that's, why not? It's a great place. Got the acetate base layer with the printed artwork on it. And then when you get them all in, you're going to put that top piece of acetate over there. And then the box was designed to be a storage box because it is a sturdy box and is perfectly fit for everything. And then it's going to tuck away easily um, into a cabinet or a drawer for you. So I'm um, definitely a fan of that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab the cat's tongue. Let's get that going. I'm just going to put this back on here. Any questions, friends? Anybody trying to make the purchase and having difficulty? If you need that link, if you don't want to be bothered with all that, just go ahead and DM me or email me. We'll send you the link. Um, you know, we get it. You may be like, I don't got time for that. I don't got time for that shiz. Chrissy, come on. It's okay. I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be mad. Um, what am I going to do here? Actually, I'm going to do this one. A little traditional BB. A little BB. And then I want to do this one, I think. This is just going to be like a conglomeration of all conglomerations. <clears throat> and then payment number. Go leave it. Oh, hi. I put it on back. Put that all on. I'm almost off the screen. Goodness gracious. And then you can look around the back, see if everything is straight as you'd like. I'm realizing this is not straight enough. Use that grid. Use that grid. Duh. So important. All right. Got some scratch, scrap paper here. Do I want to add anything else? 
this is going to end up being like the mother load, uh, the mother load swatch conglomeration here. Put the, why not? Put the light fast info. Okay. Let's get her done. Let's get her done. Get her loaded up. And you just, you kind of go across and make sure you're covering all your surfaces. And then friends, I'm a big eyeballer. So I will use the edges of my pages. And as I'm stamping through, and you're going to see me stamp a whole page or two in the, the free video, um, I will use, I will eyeball using the edge of other of other areas that I stamped. Now, you might be, this can happen, friends. Like, why is this so spotty? Number one, this is a rougher watercolor paper. Um, Legion, Stonehenge Legion is a great paper, as well as, um, um, hi, uh, New York Central Cold Press. I like to swatch my watercolor um, paint on cold press, but it can be tricky for stamping. So you might want to apply a little more pressure if you're using more heavily textured watercolor paper. Um, and, and everything will be okay. But those two papers I mentioned are great options because they don't have a super heavy texture. What is happening? Oh, I know what I did. Friends, actually, it's not the paper. I had the stamp up. This stamp was up on the lip of this stamp. Goodness gracious. What is wrong with me? I'm like sleepy, sleepy town. Now, if this happens again, I don't know. I give up. <clears throat> I did. I think I had two stamps like overlapped. So the one just wasn't hitting. Is it still overlapping? I don't know what's happening. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know why it's doing that. Look at that. Oh, yeah, it's doing something. Look at that. It's like stuck on the one ledge. Now I've got it all over my fingers. You know what? We'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. She's not talking. She's very serious. I'm very, like, freaked out. I don't know why this is happening, but anywho. So we're going to go ahead. You could paint a little picture in this one. Just a fun little scene. Put in all your traditional pigment info in here right and i'll show you what i mean and it could be an abstract it could be a little flower i've seen folks do really cute swatching things with cute little um just painting the same little flower over and over again a little teacup a little you know anything that could just translate really well monochromatic wise um this could be a great just little See how the three colors more evenly run into one another. So maybe there's maybe you bought a trio palette, right? This could be a great combination for just a three colors, three new colors in your set, right? And just let them run together naturally without much force, not much going on. And then choose one of the colors maybe that you really want to see how it does in terms of mass tone to sheared out. Make sure to get a lot of color puddled up on that end because that is mass tone. Mass tone is a lot of paint, not a lot of water. A lot of paint, not a lot of water. You want to shear that out. Don't want to carry too much of that color. Friends, I want to see your watercolor swatches. I want to see that distinctive dark to life dark to light, dark to light. Your swatches, I'm going to just say it. Your swatches should not look so monochromatic. Dark to light, all right? Dark to light. That's what you want to see in your swatches because that is the joy, beauty, and magic of watercolor.
is seeing that dark to light stuff happen. Yeah. All right. Let's try another combo. Put this on the side. Grab my my block that is all clear. And let's see. What do I want to use? I love the washi tape so much, but I do I do love the paint too because there's so much you can accomplish on one on one of these. So much. I love this combo. How do I want this to go? I think maybe this. Just play. Play, have fun. Have this one go upside down. All right. I need a little scrappy scrap. Get it good and inked up. I also have the fan on because that could be definitely working against me. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so we've got space for our name, our brand, and our pigment number. So that's your traditional stuff. But let's let's paint a little monochromatic. Actually, let's I keep painting red. I don't I keep reaching for that red. And I don't know why. So let's go ahead and do a little actual like mini, mini painting here. All right. I'm going to let that go. Let the it dry up a bit and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do my full like my mass tone at the beginning where the squirt of paint meets the 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 tube opening I'm going to blot my brush rinse my brush my brush is damp though because I want to start spreading that color blot rinse if I'm carrying too much color kind of push it back up blot and I'll give you a little secret, friends. I often am blotting when I'm swatching on a damp paper towel. You want to see that ombre. Let your swatches be the most powerful they can be for you. Okay? Yeah, baby wipes, friends. I'll give you a quick peek. I love honest baby wipes. They don't leave a residue on bums or stamps. Been using them for my kids since 2015. I also am a fan of this archival ink cleaner. It was recommended by someone in the community and it has a little, a little um, cloth on it and it works really well. But I did a couple different methods. I did soaking, I did a scrub pad, um, baby wipes. Yeah, beautiful stuff. All right, I'm gonna go back in here, a little more mass tone going on. Really want to see how far I can push the mass tone on this. That's the thing. Remember, watercolor builds. Let these swatches teach you something about how sheer or how intense you can get a particular color from a particular brand. This is your time to push. Push, push, push. All right. Then we're going to go mass tone again on the label. Not a lot of water, but a lot of paint. There's actually a lot of water there because it was a small area. And we're gonna go ahead and let that dry. I'm gonna go back into my little photo or my little painting here. Photo, what am I saying? I'm gonna go back into my little, little painting. What brush do I wanna use? I'm gonna use my number two round from the Art for Joy sake. And I'm going to blot a little, just grab a little tear. I want to blot a little. And this is, this is what I'm telling you. This is your swatching experience right here. This is your swatching experience. Each color in a new set that you get, do this. So fantastic. I'm going to bring it in, do a little really dark green at the center. I'm going to go ahead and um, go off into the edges with a mass tone, like a hint of like a leaf or two, right? I'm gonna go down here and do that. 
let the leaf kind of crawl up the side, right? And then I'm gonna take this number two and I'm gonna do a little lifting. Lift, blot on a paper towel off screen. Lift, blot, lift, blot, all right? And you can, you can learn so much from that little baby painting. Yes, see that? So you've got your little baby painting. You've got your tr really, truly a traditional swatch down here. Now look at how that color really moved and grooved and carried. And I don't want that. It's a nice mass tone up at the top. So I'm going to blot some of this away, right? And then I'm going to go in and lift. I want to see how easily, like, is this a high staining color? You know, this is early on in the painting. Can I lift this almost down to nothing? That's going to teach me a lot about this particular color. Can I lift this almost down to nothing? So I keep going in with clean water, blotting on a paper towel, scooping it up, blotting, scooping it up, blotting. And look at it, it's showing me that it's staining. It's, you know, there's that some of that color there. I doubt I could get that fully out at this point. And it's only been on there for like a minute. So you have some information about the staining. All right, look at that. I think this might be one of my new favorites. So cute. You could easily get the light fast stamp in there easily, easily. She would fit in there if you wanted to get that info. That would fit right there. Granulation, the staining property. You may want to put the staining property on this one, especially if you're if you're experimenting with lifting. So, oh yeah, oh yeah. And you can do that kind of stuff after the fact, right? Say you are like, oh man, I really wish I would have added that to this little grouping. Well, go ahead and do it. Just get that on there. Decide, you know, what orientation you want this and go ahead and add it to each one. Maybe you have the whole page done, who cares? Go ahead and add it, all right? Go ahead and add it. This is one of my more light fast colors if I am remembering properly from memory. I have the fan on, so I'm not getting a smooth transition here. But anyway, there we go, there's another one. Let me take a look at questions and see what's coming up. All right, lots of great stuff going on, on, on in here, friends, um, about cleaning. So make sure you get in there if you're on replay and read those comments. Um, let's see here, pixie spray, baby wipes on my stamps, yep. Oh, a movable light adhesive to re, I'm assuming that's to kind of restick the stickiness. Um, The, okay, so it's light fast. So the O's are for um, the higher the light fast rating, the more of these you would fill in. So if it's a super, if it's as light fast as light fast can get, you would go ahead and fill these in. It's just a great way. Um, you know, there's different ways light fastness is tested. So it's a great way for you to be able to kind of um, make accommodations for, you know. So basically it's a scale. It's a scale of five dots, and depending on how many dots you fill in, the more dots you fill in, this was my brain, the better light fast rating it is. Just gives you general information. That's what it's there for. It's just a little scale that you fill in with your color. And I had way too much ink on that one <laughs> when I did it, but that's okay. I would highly recommend, um, you know, doing, if you've not done a lot of stamping before, you need to build some muscle memory with the stamping process, like you would with any, with a brush or a pencil, um, and just get yourself comfortable with how much pressure, how much ink, you know, how hard you press into the ink pad and get that rhythm. When you are um, watching the free video, video, I'll talk about that rhythm a little bit. Um, and you'll see the effects of, of good muscle memory when it comes to making some really consistent stamps. But yeah, I would definitely give yourself some time to practice that if you're not super familiar with stamps. So I'm just showing you the cleaning process. Uh, these were just used. They were, um, I had cleaned these thoroughly. 
after I did my video. So um, you can see how quickly these come clean now with just a baby wipe because honestly, um, you know, that ink wasn't sitting in there for long. I mean, they're not perfect, but you can get in there and scrub a dub dub and they're gonna come clean pretty quickly for you. Here's another one, the cat's tongue. <laughs> I want to get a watercolor journal just for this. Um, yeah. I think that is a fabulous idea. You could make your own out of your favorite paper. I just do mine on loose sheets of my favorite paper. Um, and I have them filed away in a little like fabric folio with a zipper. See how easily those come clean? They're really clean. So I definitely recommend giving them a quick once over after each use. And then, you know, after each session that you're swatching. And then, you know, depending on how often you're using them, you might want to deep clean them once a month. You may want to deep clean them every time. It just depends on your personality and your preferences and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Oh, the toothbrushes. Toothbrush would be phenomenal, yeah, to, to scrub your stamps, absolutely. Yeah. All right. There we go. And last one here on this block. Oh. Swatching can be so cathartic, but my whole point is I see a lot of people get stuck there. Like they want to paint and they want to continue on from their swatches, but they don't feel worthy enough. So they just go back to swatching more. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I wanted to give you a way to swatch um, a way beyond, you know, adjacent to in addition to the traditional documentation type swatching to give you an experimentation type swatching that would really give you the confidence to continue on quickly and bravely into a painting. Yeah. All right. And then you can just clean your block. I mean, this, this uh, baby wipe is pretty dirty. I'm being pretty uh, frugal here. I should have switched over to another one, but just to give you an idea of how clean, how quickly they can become clean. I love that recommendation of storing these upside down in your box. Very, very, very brilliant. Love that. And then you're gonna just return these. Oh, this one is not Z1. You're gonna just return these to the acetate sheets over top of the imprint for each, there we go, and beautiful, oh, I nearly got that upside down, all right, and the light fast one, and then you want to get that sheet, that acetate sheet, where'd it go, I've got two sets swimming around here, friends, so I'm like, my brain is just like, wait, where is everything supposed to go? This was supposed to go here. How are we feeling? Does this make sense? Are you excited? What questions do you have? Did anybody try to actually um, purchase? Are you having any difficulty with the search find by with the long method? And you're like, just I'm over it, Chrissy. Give me the stupid link. Um, let me know your questions and comments. And while we're at it, friends, let's go ahead and do a giveaway. I'd like to give away two sets of the stamping sets. Um, all right, let's do it. Let me think of a fun question, a fun trivia question. Actually, let's do the birthday deal. Who has a birthday closest to today? Go ahead and shout out those birthdays for me. Go ahead and shout out those birthdays for me. I want to hear it. Whoever has a birthday closest to today's date, April 15th, is going to go ahead and win a set of these stamps. And this can be for international as well. That's fine. 
April 4th, April 30th, April 5th, May 1st, April 12th. Ooh, geez. April 12th. Is that not the, is that not closer? I think that's pretty, May, okay, May 12th. I think April 12th's in the running. Jennifer, haha, <laughs> birthday buddies. Um, so far, April 12th, I think is the closest. Correct me if I'm wrong, if my brain is not thinking about this properly, but I'm pretty sure that is the closest so far. Happy birthday, April buddies. Yes, you do have my birthday. I have yours. April 12th, July 10th, May 5th, May 12th. Um, yeah, April 12th is correct so far. There we go. All right. Looking like April 12th is the winner. Let me go back up and see. It's going off my screen already. Stick around. I'm going to give another one away. I hope I didn't just get ink on my forehead. Because that would be hysterical. Okay, Jag. Jag, you are the winner. Go ahead and send your shipping information to hello at christyrice.com. Attention, Kristen. Let Kristen know you want a sw you won a sw uh, swatching stamp set. And we'll get that right out to you. Awesome, awesome. All right, let me think of another one. Let me think of another one. All right, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Thank you, Paint Chronicles. Love swatching, and this is such a... A new fun way to do it. I love how you are creative, creativity, creatively me. Yeah, I, I definitely am. I've got no shortage of that, but thank you so much. All right, let's see here. I was um, creating some swatches, showing some swatches, some samples. Uh, friends, I was showing some swatching samples during this live. And I mentioned that one of them that I made was possibly a new favorite. Um, do you let me know either the color I was using on that particular swatch stamp or the stamp combination I was using to win the second set of stamps today? Let me know. Let's see if you've got the good memory. Let me know. It was potentially my new favorite. It was my new favorite. Yeah, it was green. Donna, you got it. It was this bad boy. It was this combo. I was painting the emerald green from the emerald D green, as I often say, from my Art for Joy Sake palette. And you got it right. Jennifer, yes, it was the paint tube and the swatch, the Pantone swatch. But, um... But Donna was the first. So Donna, go ahead. Congrats, your winner number two. Donna, if you would please go ahead and where did you go? There you are. No, oh, where did you go? Donna, wanted to put you up on the screen. I can't find you now. There she is. My mouse. Okay, Donna P, go ahead and send your details to hello at christyrice.com. Attention, Kristen, let her know that you won one of the swatching stamp sets from today's live. And we'll go ahead and get that out to you. I sound like a um, game show host. Oh my goodness. Anywho, anybody watch the creatures video? Did anybody watch the creatures video? This one. Did you watch it? Did you watch the craziness, the ridiculousness that I put myself through? It was fun. Apparently, I made a lot of you laugh. I'm glad to hear that. I have to be honest, though. I made myself laugh so much during the filming of that. It was real-time audio for um, the painting part of it. 
I just sat down, made sure the house was quiet and just went with it. Oh my gosh, I was laughing at myself. Some of it was cut out. It was a blast. So I highly recommend, highly recommend watching it and going ahead and doing it yourself. Um, you know, start with blob flowers if you're a little nervous about figuring out the creatures. But it's just fun. Like going into it, just being like, whatever. Let's see what kind of real or fantastical creatures I could make. Yeah. Congratulations, Jag and Donna. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you have so much fun with your stamp set. I know you will. Sorry. Not to be like, whatever. But I know you will. I know you will. Because it's it's hard not to um, enjoy like messing around with stamps and colors and paint and newness. So let me just show you what we got going on here. All right, friends, as I promised, um, I will be going live twice this week. Um, I do have a new video as well coming up this week. It'll be on Sunday again. That seems to be my new upload day. It's been working out. So uh, please join me on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. And I'm going to be sharing my haul, my art supply haul from Europe. And of course, I'll be painting. I'm not just going to show you art supplies and be like, okay, that's it. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm so bad. I feel like I just sounded like Monica there. I don't know what's happening. Anywho, I need to cut this down. So remember friends, if you want to pick up your own stamp set, if you just don't have the time and you want to get right to it, there's a link in the description box here. Um, and it's all like my custom art supplies. Yes, I designed these is, is what, the, what the little header says in the description box. You can find the link there. It'll take you to a landing page with all of my products. Sorry, I'm cutting these out. That is really loud and obnoxious. Or if you want to help a girl out, I would love for you to search on Amazon watercolor paint set. Set the price filter to 25 to $50 and you're going to scroll down a few pages and you should find me quickly. You're going to find an image of the stamps, the box, a pink carnation, and you're going to know you're in the right place immediately. Ah, all right, friends. All right, friends. Thank you so much. This was a blast. I hope to see you on Thursday and um, happy swatching. <laughs>